It feels as if I purchased one of these pumpkin carving kits every fall and decided it was time for an upgrade. So I got this kit from PSI Penn State Industries where I get a lot of my uh, kits from and so far this looks like a really nice well made quality kit and it should last for many many years. The kit came with a carving knife, a spoon for gutting the pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern and this unique triangle knife for making uh, you know triangle shapes. And it came with three brass ferrules. So I've decided to try out some red eucalyptus wood for the handles. I've actually never turned red eucalyptus, but I hear it's very similar to African mahogany wood. So for this project or kit, I'm basically going to turn three tool handles. And I've decided to do them uh, all the same to have it as a unified set. I just need to make sure that the ferrule fits on there. It's always good to double check that. And you always want to leave a little bit of space in there for the glue, which I'm using a 30 minute epoxy, just so I have enough time to do all three handles at once. Then I'll just let the epoxy cure for 24 hours.
Now I'll just mark my calipers for the thickness. That way I can mark the thickness for the other two handles later. I really enjoyed turning the red eucalyptus wood. However, the color is a little bit 
on the pink side and I was hoping for it to be a little bit more red. So I'm going to dye it a red color, but this is alcohol-based wood dye, so the grain and the pattern and the figure will still come through. I am looking for a dark maroonish color and this is a red bright vibrant color right now out of the bottle so I'm going to use several coats of this red and I'm also going to add a little bit of silver gilt cream with some black gilt cream and that should give me what I'm looking for. And if you're turning between centers like I am here or if you're using a chuck and you get any of this alcohol-based dye, if you're using that, on the chuck or your drive centers. It just comes off easily with some rubbing alcohol. I would just put some oil on after so it doesn't rust. So it took me nine coats of the red to achieve the right shade or the shade that I was looking for. And you can start to see here that grain starting to pop through and it looks incredible and I'm going to accentuate that with some gilt cream. So I sporadically applied the silver and then later the black and from what I've seen it didn't really make a difference the order in which you applied them. After applying each the silver and then the black I apply a friction polish and this will help to take off all of the dried surface gilt cream. And I will keep applying the friction polish until the handle is completely red or that I can visually see that there is hardly no silver on the surface or black. And wow, does that look frightful. <laughs> You'll also want to keep in mind what type of finish you're applying on this if it is going to come in contact with uh, food, if you're going to make pumpkin pies or uh, roast some seeds or something. Like a salad bowl finish would work over the top of this. And whatever finish you use, make sure that it's cured well before you use it. I'm also going to retouch up the burn lines here because some of the silver got in there and I'm just going to clean that up. And I'm just going to add a little bling as they say on the end of the handle to cover up the mounting hole and to add that little something extra to give it that elegance that you know Dracula has. <laughs> and these are just plastic coat buttons that I used and sanded the back down. Now I just need to start this whole process over two more times. <laughs> Well, without a doubt, these tools are much better than what I've been using over the last several years with the kids making jack-o'-lanterns. I would definitely recommend this kit. It's really, really a nice kit. Uh, it was fun to make, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but they are stainless steel. And the scoop was really nice as well. It didn't bend or even the handles. None of the finish came off. However, there are two tips that I'd like to note that I've noticed while carving the pumpkins. Uh, when I made the beads, uh, the coves on either side of the beads kind of get pumpkin in there and then you have to kind of clean it out of the cracks later. So next time I probably won't have that in my design. And if you don't fill up the uh, hole where the ferrule is when you're putting the epoxy in, all the way you could get pumpkins stuck in there as well. 
The pyramid cutting tool was pretty neat and it actually came in pretty handy uh, for making the eyes, the nose, and some of the teeth as you can see here for the mouth. So all in all, this was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, please stay safe in your shop at all times. Take care and have a happy Halloween.